Hey, what's up YouTube? Down the Fix It Man. Got another quick video here for you. I'm gonna show you how to change your rear brake pads and your rear brake rotors on a 2020 Honda Odyssey. Now this does have the electronic parking brake and I'm gonna show you how to retract that in this video as well. Now there's a few different methods to retract the parking brake. One way that I've done before is just disconnect this right here and then provide battery power just to the motor. Don't put anything in on this side. Now you, you never really know on the direction on these as far as which prong to put positive and which to put negative. And it's a little riskier that way because if you do it for too long, you can push it all the way out and ruin the gear and the mechanism there. Now, sometimes cars will also have almost like a cheat code, like a, a certain sequence of functions with that parking brake button, and that can enable service mode, or sometimes you can go into the car's computer menu and retract that parking brake far enough to replace the brake pads. And some scan tools will also let you do that as well. The method that I'm going to use today is just a manual method. We're just going to remove the motor and turn that or wind that in with a Torx bit, and we're just going to screw that in manually, and then that will allow us to push the caliper piston the rest of the way back in hydraulically so that we can fit in those new pads and new rotors. So the first thing we need to do is pull off the motor here. Now that's held in place by two little bolts here and those are a Torx T30. So I'm just gonna loosen and remove those. There's one on either side here. Now I didn't say it before, but make sure that you don't have the parking brake on. And also you need to make sure that you don't turn the car on while you do this, especially if you're going to disconnect the parking brake connector here. I'm just gonna leave it connected because we're just gonna pull this off and set it up over here out of the way. You don't necessarily have to take this off, but if you do and the car is on, you will end up with some error codes. But now that we have those two screws out, we should be able just to wiggle this out carefully. There's just a rubber O-ring that holds that on, kind of prevents moisture and dust from getting into that mechanism. We'll just tuck that back right there out of the way. All right, so here on the inside, you can see this is the mechanism that we just need to wind back. And I'm just gonna use this T45 Torx bit and just put it in there, right in through that opening. And then we're just gonna turn this in clockwise until it stops. It's a pretty easy turning mechanism. You don't even need to use a ratchet. Just turn it all the way in until it stops turning right there. Now, once that doesn't turn anymore, just take out that T45 and come back around here and we can push the caliper piston back in. Now that we have this parking brake mechanism turned all the way back in, we can push back the caliper piston into the body of the caliper, which will make room for the thicker new pad material. Now, when we do this, the brake fluid is gonna travel backwards through the brake lines up into the master cylinder. So it's very important that we pop the hood and go take a look and make sure that we have enough room for that additional fluid so that it doesn't overflow and make a big mess. You could also take off the little rubber cap here and open this bleeder screw and as you push the caliper piston back in, the old fluid will come out the bleeder rather than going backwards up into the master cylinder. But if you do it that way, you do risk introducing air into the system. So you may have to bleed the brakes when you're done. The way that I'm doing it, we do not have to bleed the brakes when we're done. So let's go pop the hood and take a look and make sure that we have enough room. Now here's the master cylinder reservoir right here and you can see that our fluid level is way down here towards the minimum. So we have plenty of space to push that backwards up into the system without overflowing out the top of this cap. A lot of people ask me if you need to remove this lid when doing this and you really don't. Any additional pressure in here can easily still escape through the lid. The reason I don't usually take this off unless I absolutely have to to take out some old fluid or to be able to inspect better is because anytime you expose brake fluid to air, it absorbs the moisture in that air. Brake fluid is hygroscopic, meaning that it it attracts moisture and that causes it to degrade and go bad. So we're going to leave the lid on, but it looks like we've got enough room to push the caliper piston back in. So let's go do that now. Now there's lots of ways to push the caliper back in. I prefer the little pry bar method. It seems to be the quickest way, but you can also take this caliper off and use a C-clamp or even a caliper wind back tool. But the, the pry bar or small screwdriver seems to be the quickest method for me. It seems to be my preferred method. This is the Mayhew Dominator pry bar. I really like this one. Just grab this and put it in through this little opening right here. Here. You can see it coming out right here and then just pull that towards you. Just some slow and steady pressure and that will push the piston back in. Now I'm also going to shift over here and I'm going to try to slide this in between the inside pad and the rotor just to make sure that we get that pushed all the way back in. You can see now we've got a lot more room in there for that new thicker pad material. All right, now we can loosen and remove these two caliper slide pin bolts. Now these are a 13 millimeter, or you can also use a T45 on the inside. Now when you break these loose, sometimes the slide pin will spin. And so you may need to use a 17 millimeter open end wrench on that to hold it steady. Yeah, you see that slide pin is just spinning. So we'll put the open end wrench on that. There we go. 
Just gonna zip these off real quick. Now we can take off the caliper, and this one's pretty lightweight. I'm just gonna set this right down here on the lower control arm, out of the way. And then we can just pry out the old pads. Now you can see the little noisemaker is on the inside pad on the bottom. Now, since we're taking off the rotor, we're also gonna pull off this caliper bracket here, and that's held in place by these two 17 millimeter bolts. And they're on there pretty good, so we're gonna need something like a breaker bar or a long handled socket wrench to break those loose. And we'll just zip those off real quick. It's a good idea to have one hand on this caliper bracket as you take this off so that it doesn't drop to the ground. All right, now we need to take off the rotors and those are held in place with these little rotor screws. These are notorious on Hondas and Acuras for stripping out. This is a JIS-3, not a Phillips-3. Sometimes those are stuck so good and a lot of people end up having to drill those out and uh, re either replace them or just abandon them. This tool right here, this is an impact screwdriver. They call this the Vessel Impacta. This is a company from Japan. It's got this striking cap on the back. So if you put this in and you start hitting it, it will actually rotate counterclockwise, which will help break this loose and hopefully free that without having to drill it out or anything. So let's give it a try. That got it. Now, sometimes the rotors will just come right off with a little tap or a little hit with a mallet. This one looks like it's stuck on there pretty good, especially right here around the hub. You can see it looks almost like it's rusted to the hub. So there's a special tool for that as well. It's called a rotor remover 9000. Now, if that doesn't work, if you look carefully here, you can also see that there are some threaded holes in the rotor. You can get two M8 1.25 bolts and thread them in to these threaded holes and they'll basically press up against the hub and that will help you break this loose or pop the rotor off the hub. Usually the Tanya Harding method works, but let's give it a whack here and see if we can get this. There we go. Now, before I put the new rotor on, I'm gonna try to clean the rust off of this hub with this wire wheel on a drill and just make sure that you do wear some safety glasses if you're gonna do something like this. Just gonna clean that off real quick with some brake cleaner. And now I'm gonna put some anti-seize on that hub just to prevent that new rotor from getting stuck. Mostly worried about the center part there. That seems to be where these stick the most. Now, if you can see, this rotor comes packed in some oil, which prevents that from rusting when in transit or while it's sitting on the shelf. So it's important that we wipe that oil off before we put it on. I'm just gonna use some brake parts cleaner here. And I usually just spray that on a paper towel and then just wipe it down. All right, and then when we put this back on, you wanna take note to the threaded hole there, and we're gonna line that up right here with the tapered hole. There's a lot of debate about whether or not these screws are really necessary. A lot of people say that these are really only for manufacturing as the vehicle goes down the assembly line. As long as they're not stripped and not giving us any trouble, I'll usually just put them back in. Just make them snug. Now, before we put this caliper bracket back on, we're gonna change the hardware here. Just pry that out. And then I'm gonna clean up this surface here to make sure that the new hardware sits nice and flush. Now I'm gonna do that with this little wire brush again on a drill. Just make sure that you do wear your safety glasses if you're gonna use something like this. Now I'm also gonna pull out and clean and re-grease these slide pins. Just pull back on the rubber boot here and just pull those out. Sometimes I'll put them back in once or twice just to try to get out as much as the old grease as possible. If they're really stuck, I'll take off these rubber boots and clean out that little opening with some brake cleaner and redo the whole thing. But this one really isn't too bad. It still feels pretty smooth. So I think we're okay with just cleaning that, wiping that down. And the grease I'm gonna use here, this is Versacam. This is synthetic caliper grease, works pretty well. Just get a nice little coat of grease on there. Let me just pop that one back in. You see how it pushed right back out? That's because there's trapped air in there. You need to squeeze that boot as you push in and you'll hear the little little crackling, little, little air popping as you kind of burp the air out of there. That looks good now. You see now it's not pushing out. So that's ready to go. Let's do this one here. 
Now this one has the little rubber sleeve or little bushing at the end. Sometimes those will swell and that can cause it to get stuck, especially if you use the wrong kind of grease. But this one doesn't look too bad and it definitely didn't feel stuck. So we'll just wipe this one off and then add some new grease. And just pop that one in. See the same thing, you see how it pushes out? We need to squeeze that as we do it to burp out any air. If you use too much grease, it'll also push out. And that's bad because that causes your brakes to bind and drag, but that feels fine right there. Now, before I put the hardware on, I usually will coat these now with a little bit of that same grease. Now, this is not a lubricant, more of a just a protectant, because a lot of times corrosion will build up underneath. That can cause your brakes to hang up or bind. I've noticed just by doing a little coating of this brake grease underneath the clip, I know it doesn't sound right because grease is usually a lubricant, but that little thin coating just seems to help prevent some corrosion and buildup that can cause the rust jacking and cause your brakes to bind especially if you live in a really rusty area. All right, here's the new hardware, and these are just called abutment clips. So all we need to do is just line those up and snap them in place. Now these clips are a little bit different than normal. You can see that they have this little catch or this little spring that when the pads are in, it's like a little return spring so that it'll prevent that from dragging. It's different than having the little V-springs like this has up front. Looks like this is ready to go back on the vehicle. Now before I put that caliper bracket on, I'm gonna put some thread locker on these bolts here. Line that bracket up and get these bolts started. Just gonna zip those on real quick with this. And we're gonna get those torqued to 65 foot pounds. All right, here's the brake pads we're using. I just picked these up from O'Reilly. These are the Import Direct. They have this weird orange coating. I think that does something to your brake rotor when it does its initial braking. But uh, all we need to do is just kind of line these up at an angle and press them in place like that. And you can see those little springs are doing their job. They're pushing them off of the rotor slightly. Same with the inside pad. Just kind of put it in at a little bit of an angle and press it right up against the rotor. Now, just to help keep these a little bit quieter, I like to apply a little bit of this silicone ceramic extreme to the backside of that shim. Just kind of helps dampen some of the vibrations that cause brake noise. A little bit on the inside here as well. All right, and then we can bring our caliper back up. Now, sometimes dirt and dust will build up in here, so I'll hit that with a little wire brush. Just be careful not to damage that boot, and it's also a good idea to inspect the boot and make sure that it's not torn or damaged in any way, and this one looks like it's in good shape. So now we can just carefully place this over the new brake pads, like so. And before I put these caliper slide pin bolts in, you can see that there is a little bit of remnants of thread locker on here. Probably would be better if I had the Permatex Blue Medium Strength this is just all that I have. I'm sure that that will at least work and prevent those from accidentally loosening. We can put these back in. Just have to pick up a little bit on that caliper to line that up. And we'll just get these snug. Now here I'm gonna use the open end wrench to hold that slide pin while I tighten this. Now the torque spec that I found online was 16 foot pounds. Now that seemed a little low to me, but that's what I found online. If you find something different, feel free to put a correction in the comments, but 16 foot pounds is what I was able to find for these two caliper slide pin bolts. Now I wanna point out before we put the motor on, you see right here, there's a little rubber O-ring on the mechanism here, and that's what helps keep dust, dirt, and even moisture out of this mechanism. So it's a good idea to not only inspect that and maybe clean it, but I'm also gonna put just a little bit of this silicone grease and that should help our motor slide on a little bit easier. All right, then we can just carefully place that right over that mechanism. Now here, you don't wanna force it. Well, see, that went right on. That was really easy. But when you're putting that on, don't force it. The shaft and then the little insert have to line up. Don't go forcing that very strong. Just line that up. This one just slid right in. I think that grease was helpful. And then we can put in these two little T30 Torx bolts that hold the motor on. I'm also gonna just put a little dab of the same thread locker here to each one of these. I think that that will also help just keep those in place. I don't know if there's a torque spec on these little bolts right here that hold the motor on, but I would just say, just make them snug. All right. And you're done. Now it's very important before you drive off, you need to press on the brake pedal several times, which will push the caliper piston back out, pressing those pads up against the rotor where they need to be. Now, when you do this, don't press the brake pedal all the way to the floor, 
that can damage the seals in your master cylinder. Just press it down about halfway several times until it feels firm. And don't forget to double check the fluid level in your master cylinder before you head out as well. Now after you have pressed the brake pedal and pushed those pistons back out, the parking brake portion of this should be self-adjusting, meaning that all you need to do is apply the parking brake and you'll hear the motor run and what it's doing is it's going to wind that mechanism all the way back out until it's adjusted in the manner that it needs to be. Then once you take the parking brake off, it only releases so much and so it should be automatically adjusted and you shouldn't need to do anything else. You should be good to go. I hope you liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind. That does help me out. I'll get a link in the description to some of the parts and tools used in the video as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.